Uh, before Bob gets started, thanks for the scouting report. We we had the speaker on w before I jumped on. Really appreciate all you guys with the uh, UCA uh, little themes that, that I, I jotted down all your guys' notes. Thank you very much. Really appreciate the scout. Eric, on, on that theme, what, what, what's your take on, on UCA? And I looked, they're, they're a pretty good three-point shooting team. I think they're shooting about 39% on threes. Yeah, I mean, we're going to have to defend the three. You know, I think it starts with uh, 55 Jones at the point, all-time assist leader, um, second leading scorer, and then you move to Bergerson, number one, who's, you know, the, their score. Um, I actually coached against his father. Um, they're, you know, they're a good rebounding team, too. I mean, they're plus three on the glass, um, you know, and, and they played against, you know, Arkansas, Little Rock, Memphis, and St. Louis. Uh, so rebounding is going to be important. Uh, transition defense is going to be paramount. Um, after a made basket, the first 12 seconds of your defense become really important. 54% of their shots come within the first 12 seconds after a made basket. Usually teams run after a miss. They're running after made baskets. Um, you know, so our transition from offense to defense, is going to have to be no lag time. Um, you know, and then our offense just can't fight against it itself. We've got to constantly, you know, play unselfish, which which we have for most of the year. Well, what were the circumstances you played against his dad? I can't remember. It had to be the CBA. Okay. Um, and then – Don't quote me on that. Please, somebody do research because uh, I got it from Ruta and he's wrong half the time. So. Okay, well, we'll, we'll, we'll somebody, put Andrew – Somebody please do research on that. Andrew's like the Library of Congress. Well, we'll put him on that. Um <laughs> And, and then the historical aspect of this, um, you know, Arkansas hadn't played UCA since 1947, had the schedule of a team from the state since 1950. That's between, we, that's, that's before we were born, so that was a long time ago. Well, what, what's your take on the historical aspect of this matchup? Nikki, what are you drinking? And, and Scotty, what are you drinking? Water. Water, that's good for you. Nikki? A little draft latte. <laughs> Okay. All right. Good. Sorry, Bob. Um, what, Bob, you're going with, with water? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's really good for you. Um, <laughs> as far as the, uh, you know, like scheduling in state, I mean, I'm, I'm new, uh, not really overly concerned with, you know, things that I can't control, which is the past. Um, I think it's great game to schedule, you know, and like I mentioned, we, we tried to schedule everybody, you know, before the season as well. And, um, you know, I think it's good and we're excited. I hope our players are excited. I'm sure UCA is. And I think it's, you know, it, it, when you talk about the state, I think there'll be a great interest in the game. You know, maybe I'm wrong, but, but I don't think, I think it's a pretty good educated guess that there'll be excitement because it's an in-state game. And now we got to go play the game. And, and um, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're a good team. You know, they, they, they really are. They have an identity. It's, it's, you know, the hardest thing in any sport, I think, is to try to create an identity. And they, and they have some identities or they have some themes, like I said, that you guys were even pointing out before I jumped on. And, and Mike was gracious enough to leave the speaker on so I could kind of hear your guys' uh, input and, and kind of evaluate, you know, how much you guys really know. Um, about UCA. I got some more, but I'll, I'll pass it back, back to Mike. Coach? Yeah, Coach, I, I think you mentioned last night that UCA was – you had reached out possibly playing them twice this week if you hadn't been able to find a replacement game. What, what were the conversations like with UCA, and, and what do you think about, you know, how willing they were to, to possibly do that? I mean, to go into further detail, Hutch, I'd have to – I could yell down on the hall, hey, Runa, and we could get him in here as quick as possible because I – I never set, sent the text. I mean, obviously, Coach Walker and I talked. I did not talk to anybody uh, with UCA, but Coach Ruda, um, he did. He's got the text thread. I was just getting the messages. So I can't – I don't know, Hutch, the exact extent of it other than Ruda said, what do you think about potentially playing a Friday, Saturday if we can't figure something else out? I think UCA would at least be open to that discussion.
Curtis. Hey, Coach, you've been able to tinker with a lot of different combinations the last couple games. Have you have you found anything in particular that, that stood out to you that you liked? And then I wanted to ask you specifically about the couple times you've had the four freshmen in there together. Obviously, people around the state appreciate that. Was that by design? And what do you think about those guys on the floor together? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I think that, that twice we've done it. And uh, both times, you know, I, I recognize that it, that it was happening. Um, yeah, I think that, you know, like one of the one of the conversations that I had, like with the administration on the Southern game was I thought that, you know, if we could play the way that we're capable of that, that we would be able to look at different lineups early in the game in the first half. And, I, you know, I think one of these recent games, I had 10 players in in the first half. And then I think last night we had nine uh, that all got in and, you know, in the first 14 or first 15 minutes of the game. Uh, just from an experience standpoint, I, I think it helps. It also helps evaluate. Um, you know, I, I can't foresee us having a, a, a long drawn out, um, you know, rotation when we, when we get to SEC play. Um, you know, and I think guys are kind of playing into the, you know, people always ask, well, you know, what's your rotation going to look like? What's the minutes distribution going to look like? the players create it and, and you can look at the stat sheet and you can look at the plus minus sheet and um, you know, maybe next time we do one of these, I'll listen in and you guys can talk about rotation and um, it, it's really hard. To, it's really hard to play nine or 10 guys. I mean, even, even when we have a large lead and you're doing it um, you know, I get it. Like I'm, you know, like when I'm watching, you know, an NBA game, I'm like, hey, why can't they get this draft pick in or why do you know, but when you're when you're coaching, you understand um, at the snap of a finger how momentum can change. Um, you know, and, and, and I look at some of the games that we've had huge comebacks with um, and I attribute it, you know, I you, you can learn from winning, you can learn from losing, you can learn from other people, but I've seen people who mess around with rotations. And that's how you can come back when you're up 20. Or, and, and we've done it plenty of times, been on the, on the end of somebody playing guys that we feel that we can exploit it and get a quick 8-0 run. And then before you know it, you're back in the game. And, um, you know, so these games have been great um, from, from an evaluation standpoint. They've been great from a – the ability to kind of look and see which combinations work, you know, do, do we rebound enough with this group? Does the ball move enough with that group? So we're, I think now that we're five games in, we're, we're coming up with some, some really good themes and, and some good body of work on how we want to go uh, moving forward. Scotty. Hey coach, just from a discipline standpoint, how impressive as Connor been, you know, defensively blocking and altering shots. And, you know, he's rarely been whistled for a foul this year. No, he's, he's done a great job. I mean, you look, you know, he shoot 50, what, 58% from the field, 45 from the three, um, you know, small sample size of FTAs, but, but, but hasn't missed a free throw almost nine rebounds a game, 18 blocks, five steals. I mean, he's, He's, he's played phenomenal. He really has. And he's got, he's got such a great attitude and, and he knows all of our offensive plays and he doesn't try to do things that, um, you know, that stretches game out too much. So he, he's, he's really been great. Brett. Nikki. Coach, with, with several double-digit wins, the fan base is almost, you know, at this point ready for SEC play. With how the team is playing execution and cohesion and stuff, like how far off are they from the performance level you want uh, when SEC play gets here? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I think, like, the big thing is, you know, it's we actually, you know, I, I'm not sure if it's, you know, three or whatever it is, but we're, you know, we have less – um, non-conference games, everybody in college does this year. And I, I think those are important. So you take the, you know, the, the no exhibition games, the no secret scrimmages, and then you add in non-conferences, a smaller sample size than it, than it has been in the past. 
these games are definitely a necessity. I think that if we're not continuing to get better, if we're not tinkering, if we're not adding something new, meaning offensively, a new zone offense, whatever it may be, we've got to continue to try to get better each night out. We need to continue to add um, to our menu of, of what we can do offensively and defensively. Um, you know, and so, you know, we have three games before we have a little mini break and the holidays. And so it's important, I think, Nikki, that we just keep getting a little bit better incrementally. And then, and then again, try to fine tune exactly what our rotation is. And, um, you know, like JD gave up a, 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 a layup off baseline out of bounds defense. He wasn't what we call engaged. And, and uh, it's, I can't fathom that. Like, how could he just give up such an easy layup? And so those things will we'll continue to use film um, and try to keep getting better, really. Jacob? Eric, kind of going off that through five games in such an unusual season with a bunch of new faces on this team, how are they meshing through the first couple weeks of the season, especially with really not being able to do too much off the floor? Yeah, I think they're doing a great job. And I think that, you know, before practice, after practice, guys aren't going in the locker room and hanging out. They're out on the floor working on their game and talking. And, you know, Doc Rivers used to call it basketball bonding, that that time before practice, the time after practice. I think they've done a great job of just kind of buddy basketball bonding when the coaches are off to the side and they continue to work on their games. You know, they got roommates, so they're, you know, some of the guys are playing video games together all the time. And uh, so I think the chemistry's uh, come together as good as it could. I know last night I mentioned like Jalen Tate. I loved how he was kind of coaching when he was out of the game. I loved how Desi, you know, and I watched it again this morning, how Desi standing up coaching with one minute to go. Uh, love the fact that Debo Davis as a freshman is yelling at guys to X off, off of his free throw in case he missed one of his free throws. Uh, so a lot of really, really positive little things, Jacob, have, have been happening. Uh, but again, we just, we got to keep getting better. I mean, you know, we don't want to be, you know, we got to get better. I know that. Randy. I'm a stat person, coach. One stat that didn't show up is the number of altered shots by Connor Vanover. How much as a staff do you put into the altered shots by Connor Vanover? Yeah, I mean, we look at three-point under duress shots. We look at shots at the rim that are altered, Randy. I think all those things are really important from a defensive standpoint because, you know, really what you want to do defensively is just lower the opponent's percentage, each guy individually and then the team as a whole. So I think that he's done a great great job. Most importantly, he's allowed us to have great backcourt pressure and he's allowed us to gamble because if a team has a two on one, he does a great job of playing cat and mouse and understanding to stunt and bluff and then get back and protect the rim. Jason. Hey coach, I wonder about the uh, in-game roles for your coaches. Uh, I see him talking to different guys, specific guys they are holding up the signs Kind of how do you assign those in-game roles? And, and then once you get in the game, kind of what everybody's trying to do to, to keep the guys focused or whatever their, you know, their role Jason, I, I was going to ask you the question. What do you think of the creativity on the signs? Have you, have you, have you. I, I like the, I like the mix of different signs for whatever they're for. Yeah. So have you, have you noticed the different graphics and. Yes, uh, I have. Yeah, okay. it looks good. It looks good. No, I just, I was just curious kind of how, you know, I see David talking to a different guy and, and Corey and then kind of how you assign, because I see you kneeling down and talking to them. Yeah. And I just didn't know how you assign those roles during. Yeah. yeah. So Coach Patrick's holding up our offensive play calls that are, excuse me, Coach Mosier's holding up our offensive half court plays. Coach Patrick's holding up our defensive signs. Uh, what, what, what we're in in pick and roll, if we're in a full court defensive trap, if we're in a half court defense, if we're in our 23 zone defense. And then Coach Williams is holding up our side out of bounds and baseline out of bounds. Um, and then also when we're shooting a free throw, Coach Williams is holding up a sign on what we're doing. When the opponent is shooting a free throw, he's holding up a sign. 
Um, some of the things are words printed out. Others are graphics that they know what they mean, meaning our team knows. Um, we've tried to be a little bit creative and, and um, you know, we're holding those signs up quite frankly, because with the masks, um, some people disagree. You can't hear very well with the masks. Now, it's amazing how many people say, oh yeah, you can hear with the mask, but those people are coaching. So in all honesty, like your, your voice only carries so far, regardless of what everybody says that, oh yeah, you can really hear. Well, you can't lip read with the mask and it's really hard to hear. So that's why we've come up with the signs, even in, um, you know, buildings that we are, know we're going to play that are not very full or maybe no fans at all. The signs have helped us dramatically, um, you know, because of the fact that it's really hard to hear anything. I mean, it's awesome that the refs can't hear me um, with the mask on, but probably not so awesome that our team can't hear me. Kyle. Hey, Coach, just to hammer home the idea of playing UCA, I mean, it seems like you and Coach Neighbors have both made playing in-state teams, you know, a real priority. Do you have a sense from – from talking to people in the state, how much it, it means to so many people to really see a team from Fayetteville play a team from Conway? Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I you know, I read everything and, and listen to as much as I can. And I mean, I understand, um, you know, the importance and the excitement of, of a game like this. And um, I mean, I talk to Coach Neighbors and I know, you know, he's obviously spent way more time in the state than I have. And he, he felt like it's a great idea and Hunter and I have talked about it and, um, you know, so yeah, I mean, I think it's, I think it's great. I mean, I think that it's, you know, it's, it's good for UCA too. It's, it's easier to travel on them. Um, it's good for their brand. It's good for our brand. I don't, I don't see any, you know, negatives at all. I think it's, I think it's a really positive thing um, for the fans, for, both programs and, and uh, you know, your fan base is so important on how, you know, like how do they feel about things? It's, you know, I know some people don't like to say that, but I do. I mean, I think the pulse of, of your fan base is, is extremely important. Bob, got a final, final uh, follow-up? Yeah, a, a couple, if that's okay. Um, Eric, um, I was watching Sports Center last night and uh, they had, not one, but two Justin Smith dunks on their top. Bob, end. we we don't have it. Did you happen to? Did you tape that for us? Uh, no. What do you mean oh. you don't have it? You got everything. You got. You probably get. Uh, I mean, I, I'm going to get it some way, shape, or form. But Danielle will probably get it before me. Yeah, but we're going to get it some she's got way. connections. Anyway, just just yeah. I guess I hadn't, I know uh, Justin's real athletic. I guess I hadn't thought about him being like a major dunker. Just wonder what what do you think about that? And how good is that for the program? Uh, presumably kids see that whether it's on their phones or on their TVs that you know, that you had two sports center highlight dunks from from uh, Justin yeah no I mean we definitely need to get a hold of those if anybody has them please forward them to us or forward them to Mike Kaywood we, we need them bad um, I think it's awesome I mean we knew coming in his vertical leap I mean he's he's an incredible leaper you know and I think the thing with him is he's just he's a powerful dunker as well but I think anytime you can get on da 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 da, it's a really really good thing. And then Desi mentioned you had two hundred and fifty something passes last night. Two hundred fifty seven, Bob. Two fifty seven. Yep. Um, is that a record? And um, just I mean, how do you feel about that? Well, I was more concerned when I heard Desi say that in the press conference. I was wondering if he was counting those passes in game or not, because um, he did get the number right on the right on the on, on spot but yeah I think it's great I mean that's those we've had two games now of our highest ball sharing games and that's including JD who gets a shot up about every minute so um, overly impressive that we've uh, that we've passed the ball over 200 times now twice so that, that's your highest totals including Nevada or just here at Arkansas for sure here at Arkansas I mean we didn't want to pass the ball too much last year we tried to keep it in you know two or three guys hands and so maybe the 200 passes, I might've told all you guys it was important, but I was really, you know, going to bed at night saying, please don't pass 200 times. Just because you thought you'd turn it over? Or something not good would happen. Yeah. Okay. Well, well thanks.
Thanks, you guys. Thanks, Coach.